Hello everybody, it's Zalindus, and I am going to be showing you guys six uh, builds that do insane damage. Now I would really appreciate a like on this video, even if you guys hate my voice or anything, please just a like. A lot of time and thought went into these builds. So let's go to the first build. My first build is going to be the 20,000 Flare Wizard build. So, we're going to load that up. I'm going to show you exactly the process that goes into doing this. So, we're going to verse a... All my uh, build tests were on a level 60 dummy. Keep that in mind. So, to begin this, we start off with a spotlight. So, we get 35 more fire damage. Then we're going to use Resist Break, combined with another Fire debuff, and I'll show you that after this. Then we're going to use the Ninja to use the Fire Seal. Now when you're doing this, make sure your Ninja is using the Fire Seal at the very end, because if you use it before any of this, it's going to overlap some debuffs. So you want to make sure his is the last one. Then, we're going to finally do our flyer in 20,000. Boom. Alright, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm wearing. So, I'll show you guys on the damage dealer. I am using, of course, the wizard for the innate passive that gives 15% more fire damage. Then I'm using the flame seeker, it gives 50% more fire damage. I believe you can get this in the capital's castle. So I think that's where that's at. Uh, then I'm using equip shield and I'm using the shield wizard's wall so I can get the 18 plus mine. Then I'm using the pack crown. I honestly, I can't remember why, where I got the pet crown or the wizard's wall. Then I'm using the wizard's robe. You, it's to save passive points and you get the magic up. Um, you get the wizard's robe at the Jade Cavern NPC. Check out my video on Jade Cavern. Um, I kind of cover exactly what you have to do to in, order to in order to get the legendary armors. Uh, Gandalf's Ring, this comes from one of the Depths bosses, I uh, can't remember exactly which one, but it's it's one of them. Um, I also cover the Depths bosses in my videos as well. Then you get the Nomad's Emblem, I believe you get this through fishing, I could be wrong, I think it's fishing though. Alright, then my passes are Preemptive, Fast Cast, Equip Shield. And my stats are all... all my levels are went into uh, Shaman, it looks like. And I got 441 mined. So, that's how you... Do. oh yeah, I was using the Oily Sword combined with... Uh, that way when I hit with my Resist Break, my Oily um, debuff kicks in too, so that's 24... 25% more fire damage. I believe you get this also in the castle. I, th I, I believe. Um, then we got Diablo the ninja, and all he's doing is just that that uh, fire seal. And then uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Oh yeah, and I was using um, this guy just for the white magic um, spotlight. And that's it for that build. Now, let me uh, change to my rupture build. We'll load that up. And let's start on the level 60 dummy. So to begin with this, I believe I hit it with uh, armor break. Then, uh, actually, I think it's just an armor break. Um, oh no, I give it overload. It's gonna kind of confuse me because there's so many builds that I was practicing with and I can't remember the orders. 
Alright, so overload on this guy. Now I believe I use... Rupture. Yeah, rupture. There we go, rupture. There you go, 20k on that. Let's see if I can remember everything. Uh, who is the damage dealer again? Oh yeah, this guy. Okay. So, um, I think this guy is all dexterity. I believe. Yeah, he's a dexterity build. Um, he's using dual ready learning backstabber. He's using the bone trophy, which you get from the fire boss, volcano fire boss. Then the undead ring is from the uh, Quintar Reserve Pyramid, inside the pyramid. Nomad's Vest, that is from the Jade Cavern NPC. Captain's Hat, that is from a chest in the water by the dock at the Sarasara Bazaar. Uh, so yeah, check the docks around there. There would be a chest. Diamond Dagger, then I'm using Trickster with Execute Assassin. And then, um... I was using the wizard just to cast uh, that ability um, overload, so that's all he was there for. And then uh, Bale was just doing the um, the debuff, the armor break, and that's it. You don't really need anything else for that. So let's go on to the next build. All right, uh, templates. Then we got the twenty th or yeah, twenty-three K Nomad Monk. Load that up. Let's verse the level sixty dummy. Alright, so I start off with I think Resist Break. Yeah, resist break. Then I overload. Then, since it's a wind based damage build, we are gonna hit it with a wind seal. Hopefully, it lands. Okay, it did land. Sometimes it doesn't land. Then we're gonna use a wind punch. Hmm, I don't have 23k. I must have changed some of my stats. I am very sorry. Yeah, this guy, I I, I don't think he has enough uh, attack right now. Because I changed some stats up. But, still very impressive. I'll show you why he didn't do 23k. Um, so, let's go to equipment. I'll show you his stats. His stats, he's got 20 into assassin, and I did that for a different build because I needed a little bit more speed. But if you put um, the rest of the 20 levels into, um, I believe, the Valkyrie for more strength, he'll he'll be able to achieve uh, at least 23k. But his passives were Brawler, Backstabber, Learning, and, well, you don't need Learning, but do a wield. And in Bone Trophy, Undead Ring, No Man's Vest, which you get, Jade Cavern, Captain's Hat, which I already covered, He's not wearing anything uh, because I got the um, the brawler's passive. He's using the nomad because his innate passive abilities deal X percent more damage, where X is equal to the ability AP cost. And since that wind punch costs quite a lot of AP, it scales up the damage even more. And since it's a wind-based move, that's why we were decreasing the monsters with wind resistances. Now you'd probably notice that I used a resistant break. The resistant break I found out doesn't even do anything. I thought it did but it doesn't. And yeah that should cover that so I used this guy just for the wind seal and then I used um, this guy for the um, overdrive and then to get the um, the armor down, I was using the Gungner, and I I really didn't even need to use this weapon. You could have you could have just substituted.
this uh, class out for the um, the warrior. But I was I was trying to test out the the magic break or the resist break, and it doesn't do anything. To get this weapon, if if you're curious, you get this from defeating the uh, spirit cage, which is the boss in the sequoia. And I do have a video on that as well. So let's go into another build. Okay, so our next build is going to be the Thunderbringer build. This is one of my newer builds that I've been working on, and I've discovered some pretty interesting things that make this uh, work out. So, let's load this up. And then, let's test it on the dummy. So, what you want to do is a armor break. Then we're going to do overload. Then we are going to do a thunder seal because we are using a lightning based attack and I'll show you why. Then we berserk ourselves to get more physical damage. And then we use execute. And it's going to be 29,000 damage, but it's actually going to be a little more than it. It might be like 34k around there. 34, 35. Oh, that's 33k. But it has a variance because it's an axe-based build. But it can go higher than that. So, I'll show you the equipment I was using. And I was using the Ragebringer, and you might notice that my HP is really low. That's because on this weapon, you deal 50% more physical damage when the user is at critical HP, so your HP has to be low. Then I'm using the Captain's Hat, No Man's Vest, the Undead Ring, and then the Stone of Jordan. This is where I said I was getting that thunder uh, damage from. So, it, physical attacks gain thunder element attribute. Plus, you get 10% more thunder damage. Now, since I took off the bone, um, bone trophy, I had to uh, use my sub command for uh, the warrior, and it freed up a, a stance so I could use Berserker. So that's the reason why I took off the bone trophy instead, because I could use this stance, since this was already freed up anyways. So, oh, and my passes are Backstabber, Eagle Eye, Learning, and Dual Ready. So, pretty nice, because now you can start, I can pretty much change up a lot of builds now and replace Bone Trophy with Stone of Jordan to get even more damage. So I'm pretty excited about that, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys early to kind of show you guys some really cool stuff. So, let's go to the next build, which is I call the Bow God. So we're going to load this up. We're going to go to the 60 trophy. Okay, for this... Um, I think I use overload. Who is my damage dealer? Bale. Right. And then we hit the armor break. Then we sleep bomb him. Alright. Then we use quick shot. Now you'll notice that quick shot does 14k. And it uses a free action, so it's not taking my turn up. And then I have Snipe that I'm going to do next, which is 29k right there. Now you'll notice that my crit chance is really low, so I'm probably not going to get that 29k. Now the reason I named this build uh, 43k or whatever is because you can start off with Quick Shot, and if your crits land, and if your crit land on with Snipe, then it should be that amount of damage. But he died from that. But that is why 
I named that build that because you get you get the quick shot and then you get the snipe. Pretty nice build. Now, here is the 100k damage bow build. Oh, wait. I gotta show you guys uh, my setup. So I'm using the Dream Hunter bow. You get this from the Quintar Reserve NPC and you need to be able to talk to Quintars. Then I'm using the Rex Vest, which gives me 15% extra agility. Captain's Hat, Bone Trophy, Undead Ring, Initial Oomph, Learning, Eagle Eye, Backstabber. Then this guy is set up to where he has a lot of uh, agility, I believe. Yeah, he, he's straight up, his growth is all agility. So he's the hunter, basically. And he's using the assassin hunter, of course. And the reason why I use this bow is because you deal 100% more physical damage when targets are asleep. And you'll notice that my wizard, which is has the trickery, put the guy to sleep, so that's how I put him to sleep. And then... Actually, I don't even think you needed to... Yeah, you didn't even need to use a Overload, because he already has initial oomph. So you didn't really need that. Actually, I could take this off. I could take a initial oomph off, actually. And then I could just go with uh, Dual Ready, I believe. Yeah. So I could do that. Where I always have Dual Ready up, and I'll always crit. Um, and then, of course, I just had the Warrior use the Armor Break. So, let's go on to the next build. And we'll load it up. Now this build took a lot of planning and uh, testing. So please leave a like. <laughs> Alright, level 60 dummy. We are going to go in with a... Let's see if I can remember how to play this. I think quick. Uh, I think I do quick, and then I do quick on this guy, and then I do... Okay, yeah, resist break. Um... I think I resist break. This guy, armor breaks. Yeah, armor breaks, okay. Okay, then we hit the confusion. We did not hit the fatigue, but that's okay. So we'll slow him to get another debuff. Because this build relies on debuffs. Then, since we didn't get the fatigue, we are going to use acid because acid gives burn debuff and fatigue buff. Then, we're going to put the guy to sleep. Because this guy uses that bow that gives you 100% more damage when you're using a. or uh, when, a, when a monster is asleep, you get 100% more damage. Then we're gonna use Coup de Grasse. Coup de Grasse. Or Coup de Grasse, I should say. And there you go. 102,000 damage. Now my hit percent is 70%, so I might not land. Oh, it did land. Nice. So there you go. 100,000 damage, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I managed to get that. Okay, so where's my damage dealer at? This is my damage dealer. I'll show his stats real quick. All of his um, level ups were put into the assassin, so you can get a bunch of dexterity. His passives are only adrenaline, backstabber, and dual ready. 
using the Bone Trophy, Undead Ring, Assassin's Cloak for more dexterity, using the Cross Helm for uh, the power up to deal 35% more physical damage. I actually, I probably could get even more damage. Yeah, I could probably take this off and put on Battle Band. And then I could... Oh, wait, I can't do that, because I do need Adrenaline. Uh, okay, so let me explain what I was doing. A, uh, I was using the Weaver with the Battle... Or, uh... Weaver with the Warrior for Battle Skill. And I equipped a Wand on him to put the, uh, the Mute Sentence, which it also... It, um, it acts as a debuff, even though it didn't cast Silence. It's separate from silence. Mute sentence is separate from silence, so you can use this. Uh, I have this on him, the Weaver's Robe, to give him more uh, turn time, or minus turn time. Then I have the Poison Talon for poison on hit. Then I have Gusto Fang for 4 AP at the start of the battle, so I can cast uh, my my debuff, my uh, armor break. Then his passives are equip one so I can give Cursebringer to him. Then I have Blood Spiller and Crippling Coat. Crippling Coat has a 35% chance to give fatigue and day so I hope that those proc. If they do I can actually get more damage because the way that this um, this skill works is it scales off your debuffs. And I'll show you the uh, skill right now. Um, where's the assassin? Okay. Coup de gras, or Coup de gras, or whatever, however you say it. Um, deal bonus damage per debuff applied to the target. So that's why you want to stack as much debuffs as you possibly can. Also scales with attack and dex. So that's why I've been stacking a lot of debuffs. Then I have the Hobbin's Bow on this guy for the confusion. And then I have, um, I use this guy for the resist break. Because you just, all you want is a debuff. I could actually use, uh, I think, um, I think I can actually squeeze in more debuffs with him. Uh, I use this guy, the Weaver, with the Hex because if you see right... Oh wait, let me go to um, up here to the Shaman. He can cast Acid 2, which inflicts two debuffs in one, one turn, basically. You get Burn and Fatigue. And then I also use him because he has a Sleep. This guy has to be at the end... He has to be second from last, because uh, the guy has to be slept. So you want him to have sleep. So this guy worked perfect, because you can inflict two debuffs and a sleep. And he's got preemptive natural tank. Everybody has natural tank, because you want a little bit of aggro on everybody. Because if once everybody has a little bit of aggro, then my main DPS guy that has backstabber, he'll be the bottom threat, so he'll get the extra 20% more physical damage. Um, Hobbin's bow, you get that from uh, this place over here, the frog guys. You have to, I think you either steal it or drop it from them, and they, uh, yeah, they drop that bow. Uh, what else items did I not explain? You don't need any of these. I already explained all those. Curse Giver? Um, man, I can't, I can't remember where I got this, to be honest. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know where I got that, guys. <laughs> but that should cover everything. I know it was a little bit messy, because uh, I was thinking about stuff on the spot. But, um, yeah, those are six builds that, uh, do insane damage. And, um, you guys all take care. Peace.